Hello guys, welcome back to another video of Villacats. This is the second episode of STMH Alpha Noob. So today is gonna be a bit weird changes a little bit because my yoga book that covering running Windows no longer running Linux because my SD card is broken a long time ago and I'm waiting for the new one to arrive but yeah I have a backup computers next to me laying around for 10 years now running Linux very good pretty fine so let's get into it so this is a second episode yeah this on the previous episode there's some little recap um, I've done about a GPIO output so yeah very simple GPIO output but today videos video I'm gonna do a GPIO input as well as input interrupt before that I'm gonna take a look at this if I push the button LED should be on yes and if I let go is off on off on off on off so let's take a look here a bit I'm not sure that you can see but I can clearly see it and I can tell you which connect to what so the purple uh, jumper wire connect to the anode of this yellow LED and the green is connected to ground a white is VCC connected to uh, this switch uh, this push button I got this one from old computer mount and the middle pin connect to PB5 so basically the PB4 is output and PB5 is input a very basic processing by reading input and check if it's 1, turn LED on or 0, turn LED off very simple yeah it's very simple so let's take a look at the code itself right now okay this is the code itself and it's explain most of the line so First of all, include yeah this line you will see in every code because this uh, whole uh, tons of memory registers, so you don't need to use uh, a number. Instead, you just have some fancy name like this or like this that you can easily access uh, memory. You can write to it or you can read from it. So okay, this. For the include, what it includes. Next, define. Define. Oh, sorry. So define LED pin. So if I type LED pin like this one, it means number four. If I type BTN like this, it means number five. Oh, the box going around. Yeah, just that. Just assign for the number of the pins. So four is for PB four and five. Obviously, for PB five. Okay, let's go to the main part. Execution is gonna go like like this. It's gonna going down, going down, going down. Let's start with the CLK CKDIVR. HTML has uh, some kind of a uh, feature that you can divide the clock like you have 16 megahertz, and you want for some reason you want to save power like some critical uh, usage like uh, you you build data locker that want to last for months, months and you have to uh, adjust the clock speed you can use the clock divider you can by 16 divided by 2 you got uh, 8 uh, talk about the units of uh, 1 million oh no million hertz megahertz million hertz megahertz so i want to set to 0 by 0 0 mean that it's a 16 million uh, 16 megahertz divided by 2 Number two power to the zero, which is one. So we divide with one. No divider. It's full 16 megahertz. Next is a PBDDR port B data direct register. No, sorry, port B data direction register. So as the name said, uh, data <laughs> port B data direction register. So you can set as. The direction is in or out basically input or output so set to one mean you want to be output and yes definitely shift bit by pb4 which is we want to set bit 4 or pb ddr as one which is mean that we need output next is the pb cr1 port b control register number one number one is talk is, is about uh 
DPIO mode for output, there's the two mode. One is a push pull, another one is uh, open drain. So you can look up online. I'm not gonna cover in this, but for toggling every day, I recommend push pull. But for open drain, you can search on uh, on internet. There's a example, a lot of example for you to do that. So move to next thing again. I use a PBDDR again, but this time I use number zeros uh, instead of number one. So a zero indicating that that pin gonna be input. So right, I shift uh, zero to the bit five of the PBDDR, which is mean that I want to set pin five as input. A PBCR one again. This time is for a uh, pin configuration. It's very useful. So set to zero mean that. I want floating output. So there's a different two types of input. Uh, one with a pull up is just some weak resistor connect to VCC and floating. So floating basically nothing connect to them except for the uh, diode that used for current protection. Something I'm not sure of. They are inverse polarity connect to GPIO for maybe. ESD protection, I'm not sure. And CR2, this, this is not matter, sorry, I don't know why I included this code. I'm gonna show you why you will use this in the interrupt. So, CR2 basically gonna turn this uh, interrupt feature on individual pin, right? I want PB5 to be uh, interrupt. Uh, using the interrupts, I'm gonna set the bit 5 on CR2 to 1, number 1. Okay. Very quick, very easy. So jump to while number one, basically a loop forever running. And another while again, while function is very easy to use. So if while and inside this bracket is true or having number one, it's gonna do everything inside their their function until the number in this uh, bracket is zero. So if we use PBIDR. This is a input register. Like in Arduino, we use a digital read, but it is very uh, direct manipulation. We just I just use a uh, algorithmic what is it algorithmic mm, operation and operation or it's like AND gate. So if the on the bit uh, five is equal to one and two of these this one is a register that we, we want to know the actual physical pin stuff for reading uh, electrical signal from maybe from this and and with number one basically we want to check if a pb5 is high state if yes it's gonna output LED to high state using pb or yeah always stand for output and I stand for input here, you can see that's very similar, but it is used for different purpose. After we after release the button PB IDR on bit 5, obviously for PB5 suddenly go to zero, the while loop stop. Oh, oh yes, yeah, sorry. And it's gonna do everything outside that while we're gonna do loop 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 very easy. It's very simple to see plus plus and C code that this one is C language so mm, very easy okay for next part here this is a uh, input interrupt so earlier I've done the normal input stuff very easy and I'm gonna take to the next level by using interrupt so when I press button the LED should be on and a, a second press should be off if anything right so Oh, yeah. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. Oops. The reason is that there is something called debounce in when the metal contact uh, contact together contact uh, touch. It's not actually smooth surface to touch together. It's maybe some bouncing around a bit. So that's why it's jiggling and make LED sometimes it's not turned off, it's just turned on again like, like that, like that. So let's take a look at the code real quick.
Yeah, so the code only. Can I see that? Code is a little bit more uh, complicated, involving more stuff before. So let's start from here. Just light. Uh, oh, my screen around here. I hit that. So include, we just add more to a thing. The delay. Basically, you know what delay is and standard in. Standard in is uh, some kind of library for when you want to use uh, integer. So a yeah, very basic C language stuff. And as before, I define the same pin out, and I add this talk uh, integer talk. This one is gonna keep a state of uh, our switch when we press one or zero. We want to toggle the pin. A PB4 on or off it's just like a push button it's just like flip flop logic that you have one pulse is switched to one another and another pulse switch to another so about very simple logic stuff and have I very sense can see uh, two more void here this function I name it X tie in it so X tie in it I, I stand for external interrupt in it. It is my own name that I just came with. You can use whatever name, but just declare that X tie because yeah, it's for external interrupt. So it will be clear when you want to read the code, so you don't confuse with other functions. Okay, let's jump it. As I said earlier, this is uh, a pin uh, PB5 set up as input but on the CR2 I set to 1 on a, P, on a bit 5 for PV5 because I want to use interrupt function so recap again is DD, uh, PV DDR is for data, direct, data direction register input or output you want whatever you want CR1 is different but yeah as I said uh, you can take a look on the you can Go to ST Microelectronic website and search for data sheet. They explain very well. And this CR2 is for interrupt. Yeah, I want to use this pin for interrupt. Yes, set to number one. Next is a bit complicated and I'm not sure that I can explain to you good enough. But the ITC SPR2 is some kind of uh, memory register that about. Uh, interrupt what is called priority level because STMHL has four interrupt four interrupt and let me see my four finger yeah four interrupt priority and we can set which one to be the first or the second one we can set a priority in this case a first line here for reset a priority everything to normal and then I set to uh, zero by zero one is a priority a second a second one after the zero I'm not sure why they reserve zero there's some limitation of the Mac controller I believe and this is X Tai CR2 this is very important one also as as important as the uh, ITC SPR2 this register is for uh, external interrupt configuration and we just first of all we reset everything to normal so everything to normal like uh, like we did with ITC blah 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 and then later we set up everything so right here this is a type of a interrupt like a falling edge, a rising edge, rise and fall and fall and low that you can better look on google because there's a lot of information there and I'm doing too explicit for this uh, just like very bare metal stuff because I want to keep the code small I mean both in source code and actual code because I want everything to be easy just everything completely easy you just this you slap for this you can use it you don't need to do some complicated like you have to type a most human language to get this thing work so just one quick thing and this is very important if you miss this your code never works so this is a 
assembly function call is because when compiler compiler code from source code is turned into the machine code before it's going to machine code there's something called uh, assembly upcode and upcode is stand for operation code which is mean that what you want my controller to do so you tell upcode something do like this like this like this in this case is a rim rim is um, upcode to enable interrupt system a global interrupt is that when you enable global interrupt everything that use interrupt will working correctly and if you have interrupt you will need an interrupt handler so I write this one x tie IRQ interrupt handler carefully when writing the interrupt function because you need to have void and void it can be only void you don't require this void but I just know that makes some difference and after this bracket you need this uh, underscore not the underscore and the underline I'm not familiar with English name of this type of character you go with this this and the word interrupt inside the bracket is interrupt vector number that you can look up in the interrupt vector table in data sheet there's a different microcontroller can have a different uh, interrupt vector number but for SM8L with a similar uh, density like this one is a low density microcontroller it's gonna have a very similar uh, interrupt vector interrupt vector gonna point to the interrupt uh, uh, handler I believe I'm not sure about this not going too deep I'm gonna go simple so when the interrupt occur like when I press button it's gonna jump to here and I'm gonna check if a toggle is equal to one which is always uh, always toggle uh, toggle always equal to one when startup and yeah it's gonna turn the LED on because at that time of initialization it's still off so we turn it on after that it's gonna exit this and go to normal whatever that doing previously so before that it's gonna do something it's called clear interrupt pending bit so if you not clear interrupt pending bit it's gonna stuck in uh, interrupt like some kind of shaking if you already done and it's like you mark as still working but it's actually it's done it's gonna think that hey you need to do this task it's gonna stuck in x uh IRQ handler so it's very simple it's just like toggling on or off yeah, you can this is very simple code how to toggle already on or off but in this case I use interrupt you can search online there's many people doing like this on their own Arduino code okay just go back to main code again we can actually start when everything is start like okay first no clock divider you know 16 megahertz fully 16 then we set up an LED pin and we run the XTI in it for initialize uh, interrupt oh, 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 my phone. so we initialize the interrupt stuff and enable in system global wide interrupt and then we set make sure that LED is uh, having a LED pin having a zero uh, logic or tied to ground then jump to Y again this is assembly oh yeah yeah I thought I'd tell you that this this thing is called inline assembly I'm not sure if you can see it let's make some focus so underscore no, underscore 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 ASM underscore underscore and bracket and then quote WFI so we're gonna run up code WFI. WFI is stand for wait for interrupt, which is mean that it's gonna put CPU into sleep, some kind of sleep mode, and when the interrupt occur, it's gonna wake up and gonna do interrupt. After that, it's gonna jump to Y. This again, it's gonna go back to sleep again. It's very simple code. But remind that when using interrupt. Your power source needs to be stable and noiseless. And as you can see, my uh, switch debounce is uh, one of the problems that you want to concern. But before before I film this video, I struggle a lot to make 
this better because with our capacitor, external capacitor, a low pass filter to filter out a low note, a low frequency noise, it's just randomly flickering like 60 hertz as as um maybe it's picked up a picked picking up a AC interference from the main AC in my house. But if you want to use real world, you need to concern about the noise very much because SMH L pin is very sensitive. So guys, thanks for watching this video. I, I might not have a very nice voice narrate over this video and my code might not look as good as others but remind rem I will remind you one thing that if you can start something like me does in one years ago you're gonna be good at coding why get code again I hate get code so again thank you you guys for watching this video I don't know how to end this video properly so I want to press 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 pressing like this smash the subscribe button and see you again on the next video goodbye